Video number seven. This is about these things and body mounts. Finally got a working tailgate. Show them. Okay, video seven is also about the body mount. 620 bushings installed. Come on dog, get up. Help me make a video. There we go. 620 body mounts fit 521. Who knew? Today's video number seven is about the tailgate. Don't look at the wheels. And the steering column is finally connected to the rack. And the body is mounted on the frame, the body mounts are done. The 620 body mounts are in. Thanks, dog. Can it help me? Okay, so there we go. Wow, that's close. So that bolt is really close to hitting the uh, frame that holds the motor mount. Obviously, I can cut that corner off. That's not needed anymore, but it's not hitting. The angle looks really bad, but I think that's what it was on the R50. So I've got that box somewhere. And then the steering rack is right here. It's actually a lot closer forward than I thought, but um, yeah, so the, oh, here's that thing I cut off to hit the oil pan. It probably would have hit the oil pan because it was a big ugly bolt stick. So I've raised it up a lot and uh, moved it over. And most importantly, I've got the rack precisely lefty righty centered. I know exactly how much is going to go out, so I'm going to weld it in, or at least tack it in, and then we'll do another bunk test. I think this is going to work, because if I can figure out a way to connect that to that steering rack, this will work. So I just mocked it up, and uh, my tie rod is now too short. So I uh, cut too much out of last time. So now I need to make it a little bit longer. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer to make it. So I think I'm going to take out uh, three and a half inches out of the stock Miata inner tie rod. Maybe I should make it a little bit longer. That's a lot to take out. First go. Because this one was too short. Yeah, I think this would be a lot longer. Let's take out uh, two and a half inches. Let's start there. It's easier to add it back. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, just rolling up another prototype. It's not a permanent tie rod. This is just scrap me out of stuff. Just playing around with different lengths, trying to figure out the right length. So I just uh, welded it back together. Okay, just for the test. So right now we're at full compression. Okay, that's full compression. I'm raising the truck off the ground and there's no torsion bar in there. Let's check for bump steer. I'm going to do drop the suspension. Man, I don't see any bump steer at all. Let's go up. I don't see that drum move this time. Okay, let's try this angle. I'm going to watch it from the side. It's going up. We're going down. I think it's subtle to go in like before. Time, just a tiny bit. Oh god. Let's try that again. That's straight. That's straight. Is it going out just a little bit? It's hard to tell. Well, I didn't see anything move. Try not to blink. Oh, God. Can't win. This is the first issue I see is that the inner tire rod is hitting the sway bar. So I'm going to have to cut a hole in here and put a little hoop. No, it's kidding. Uh, I'm not going to be using this sway bar for long. I plan on doing a D21 front end, you know, knee assembly. So um, I'm assuming I'll sway, change sway bars. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I could keep the sway bar. Um, so.
so I think what I'm going to do is um, just lengthen this shaft here. I've already disconnected the other side. If I put a spacer in here, longer bolt. You know what? This truck came with a longer, came with a sway bar. Uh, broad or whatever, bushings. I wonder if I got that collar. I could make one. But uh, I could just take the sway bar off for now. But that's preventing me from turning right. Alright. I got my 620 bushings. An official unboxing. KCR brand. A nice little box. Individually wrapped. Every single bushing for the cab. I already opened up one of them. The question is... Uh, which bushing goes where? I think I saw some stuff in the service manual. Why did they wrap each one? Man, these feel like... Oh, they actually got... Oh my gosh, almost like Nissan part numbers on there. 5 dash... That's a 5 dash... That's a 10 digit number. Is that a Nissan part number? I'll have to look that up. Looks like 95152 dash... 85,000 or B5,000. Wow, I wonder if they actually clone Nissan part numbers. Interesting. Well, this one's got a number out too 12 17. Maybe it's just a coincidence that it has a 10 digit. I think Toyota uses 10 digit part numbers as well. Well, that one's kind of funky looking. Kind of like beat up. This is, I have three of these, and I thought two of these go in the rear and two of these go in the middle and in the front. Well, it's like, probably this one. I don't know. I just don't know if they're all level, because they're not all the same thickness. So maybe the middle of this one, maybe the rear of the cab, this one. I think that goes on the bottom. Through those, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. This truck, trying to figure out how it goes back together. So that one is different. That must be the three cabs. That's the middle. Maybe that's the front. That's the back. That's all different flipping heights. Well, that one's got an indentation. Maybe that will help me figure out where that goes. That's probably a bottom. That's a bottom. That's a bottom, middle. Oh, this is one of those. Wait, that one? Is this one different too? Wait a second. Oh, shoot. I got one of those. Oh. What the hell are. Oh, geez. Let's just go. I got two of those. Two of those, two of those. Two of those. So these should be the ones that go on the bottom. Okay, there's only four of these. Probably doesn't matter depending on the length of the bolt. So, these must be the bottom for something. Oh boy. I have to go study the picture and see. Who knows how this goes. Pretty sure that's the middle. The floorboards. The, uh, where your feet is. Pretty sure that's the middle. That's got a big hole. I need to figure out if that is the back or the front. So I got these uh, on uh, some website, zcardepot.com. Apparently they're in Missouri, I think Kansas, Missouri or something like that, which is where this truck was last titled. I bought it in Kansas, but the title actually said Missouri. Um, but I've never heard of this company. I thought it was the Z-Car place in, that Rob guy has in California, but it's not. It's in Missouri. But uh, 
It's 39 bucks with a uh, 12 bucks shipping or something. No, it doesn't show on here. There were, yeah, wood shipping was 50 bucks. About the same price as the ones in Thailand on eBay. But I thought they would come faster because they're in Missouri and I literally drove there <laughs> seven hours, so I figured. So I got them in a couple of days, like three days. Uh, so that's cool. I need this to finish the steering. So I just put front, middle, back. I think that's what I just did. Shoot. The cab doesn't line up with the bed, but I don't have any shims in the bed. I have a few of those. The bed is a little bit too low, which makes sense. So I think that's actually the most solid it's ever felt. Now I just gotta do the other side. But I think that's the trick. I think I got it right on the first try. So, front, oh wait, front, front, middle, back. And then these will go, depending on the length of the bolt, this is going to the bottom. This will probably be the front, I don't know, depending on the bolt length. But I noticed something interesting. These old bolts are like two, they go through this one, okay. But they don't go through this one here. This one, the hole is really small. The only one that goes through that one is this bolt. It's pretty tight. I had like four of these. And these, there's four one in the middle, but they won't go through this. So I knew I had to drill this out or get a smaller bolt. I'd rather drill this out. This one seems like I've got too many washers on here. I don't know if somebody added these washers. I got some old hard body body bolts too. I think I may buy all new bolts, but don't know what size yet. Anyways, most important thing is get the right rubbers between the frame and the body. So I can finish the steering and get this thing bolted on for the first time ever. Uh, so I may have to drill these out, which is odd. Pathfinder. R50 shaft. Uh, this goes to the junction box, whatever you call that thing. This is the Miata rack, and this is the leaf rack. Yeah, this actually goes down on the rack. There's more to this on the Pathfinder, <clears throat> but this one down to the rack on the uh, Mazda. Or I think there's another piece. I forget. Anyways, the plan is to, uh, this one's a little bent. <coughs> Fortunately, they're all bent at the junkyard, or wreck pathfinders. I think I'm just gonna chop this off here, or here anyways. I just want this little piece here. <coughs> Cause it seems like there's like a 16th of an inch difference between the uh, Nissan and the Mazda. I measured them out. R50 is nine sixteenths. And the uh, Miata is five eighths. The verse is 11 sixteenths, and uh, the leaf column is 11. The leaf column is, I don't know, I forgot to measure it. And the 521 is 11 sixteenths, same as the Versa, which is interesting. <coughs> okay, I've had to notch the steering wheel output because of the new angles of the steering column. I'm going to aim it down here at the steering box. Uh, it's the dash. Let me turn the light back on. Okay, maybe we can see now. So I may actually clock this thing forward to get these angles better. Kind of like the way the factory did it on the R50. But I just notched that little piece and I uh, may have to rotate that rack. But it'll actually clear right now, I think. I just took the booster out. Just need to make the connector shaft, and I think it will actually clear. So I was going to rotate this a little bit just to get the box closer to the frame mount. I'm going to use the original steering box bracket to hold this monster on. Okay, this is my markup. I had a swivel down there. I wanted to have a swivel so it laid it down like the factory one. But when I had the swivel on there, it raised it up higher. I got really close to the booster. I think it would actually still clear, but it's pretty damn close. 
Right now I've just got this, uh, that's the leaf shaft. This is an old jack handle. This is an old axle shaft out of a two-wheeler. I took out the rubber bushing since Nissan doesn't use that anymore. And I think the torque on that motor would just probably tear it up. I was going to weld this to this, but kind of like having this coupler here. That way I can actually unbolt it. And Okay, so I think I'm going to uh, weld this together in the truck. It's too hard to do outside the truck. So I got this jack handle. It's a tiny bit bigger than this tube and a little bit less bigger than the leaf shaft. So what I did is I put slots in it, four slots on the bandsaw. I used the hose clamp to squeeze it back down. I don't know if you can tell. So now it's nice and centered. There's no need to do it on a piece of angle iron on a bench and get it straight. I'd like the shaft to be as straight as possible. So I did this on the steering column and it worked, I think. So we're going to do it again. So uh, I'm going to put a little tack on here and then move the hose clamp to that end. Tack the one in the inside, then I'll take the whole thing off and weld it. I haven't even welded this one yet. Oh, I did the same thing here. This column, um, this adapter, this shaft was too small, so I had to slot it. I actually had to remove some of the material on the clamp so that it would squeeze down tight. So that's nice and tight and straight now. So once I weld these two, the steering, in theory, should work. I put the steering wheel on. Of course, I still got to build the, the mount to hold this. Okay. Couldn't weld this one on the truck because firewall's right here. It's too awkward. But I put on a better clamp. The other one broke. Got it marked. So now it's nice and tight in there. It's not flopping around. So, that little trick of uh, slicing it, clamping it, welding it, keeps this as straight as I can get it. So now we check well this thing, well this on. Well, it's in there really deep because I grind it off whatever this, what this feels like. I don't know what's some kind of coat down here. Well this, put it back in. The cool thing is this actually, you can take this bolt out and slide this shaft back. This slides into here and then it comes right off the whatever box. I'm gonna call that thing the redirection box. And then you can slide it back in. So Whoop, whoop, in and out, easy peasy. Because obviously this doesn't slide. This goes right on the motor or whatever, EPS box. So here's the problem with the uh, inner tie rod. This is at, uh, what is this at, stock eye, right eye? Oh, there's nothing on the suspension. It should be full droop, but it's not drooping for some reason. Oh, probably because it's in the tie rod. <laughs> Uh, the suspension is bound up on the tie rod. So, there we go. Now it goes down a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, okay, so this is worst case scenario. This is full right turn with full droop. Was it full droop? It is touching. And you can see the hit. I was still, <laughs> even with the sway bar. Uh, I guess it's just the rubber still. I can't believe this rubber is still this good. Give me tension, it's not connected on the other side, but I still want to push down. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm going to use 90 millimeter bolts for the front by 10, 80 millimeter for the metal on the back, or maybe 90 for the back as well. I don't know. Right now, 90 for the front. Already installed one. Seems to fit really good. Right. Uh, so I got the big bushing on the bottom. And I think that was the medium sized one. I don't know, I forget, I mentioned earlier in the other video. But yeah, that fits good. I got a, these 3 8 uh, fender washers, stainless. I got these new 10 millimeter bolts. The old bolts are not metric, but for some reason these are coarse on the front and in the middle is fine. They're like, I forget what they were, 24 pitch or something. So I'm gonna replace them all with new bolts. 90s, 80s. I'm working this combination. So, so far we've got 90 in the front. Okay, so the original bolt didn't fit, but the new 80 millimeter, 10 millimeter diameter did fit. It fit perfectly. It's the exact size. So, well, diameter. 
So let's figure out it's the right length. Now I gotta figure out is it that rubber bushing or a double bushing on the bottom. One of those two. Let's go underneath somehow. There's a 90 millimeter bolt in the back. It's a long bushing. I screwed up and got the wrong size. So no, I don't want to put an 80. Maybe I need to be a 70. Because, uh, that's what a 70 will look like. Can you see? I need to get the right nut and pull wash on there. But yeah, 70 is better for the middle one. There we go. 70 in the middle, 90 on the ends. 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so now you can see the bed doesn't line up, but the bed has no uh, shims, those factory little shims. You can see it's like a quarter inch too low, and you can buy polyurethane quarter inch bushings, so worst case I could buy those. Yeah, now the bed is a hair low, not that this is tight or anything, the bed is just sitting on steel. Okay, I had to take the sway bar off because uh, I couldn't adjust it. These rubber bushings are actually in really good shape, but they wouldn't twist. They wouldn't relax. I couldn't get them to move up. And it's basically because there's too much rust on the sway bar. So I said, well, I'll take the sway bar off. Well, ended up breaking one of the four bolts. I thought I broke them all actually, but the, uh, they don't look so good. But apparently it looks like, that one looks broken, doesn't it? But it's actually, they're just short little bolts. So I got three out of four of them out, one broken frame, so now I gotta fix that. And I can't fix that because, I don't know if you can see, but the uh, tension rod's in the way. The good news is I did find in the bed of the truck, it did come with brand new sway bar end links. The exact same length, everything, diameter. The only difference, these are metric. Which is interesting. The originals are not, of course. So that's kind of cool, but I'm missing one rubber. So I have to find another, like, new rubber in the bed. So now I gotta fix the sway bar. And uh, I did look at hard body stuff. Maybe it'll use a hard body one, but it's a little different design. It looks like the hard body one mounts here and bends up. So just taking it off for now. And I went ahead and I officially have both sides. Oh God, is it move or not? I can't even move it. I got both sides uh, tie rods built now and installed. This is a Versa one cut in half, welded on. And I also have this mounted, this welded. There's already a light in here. But uh, this is not going well either. There's a little bit of wobble in my joint down there. It's not perfectly straight. When I turn the wheels, I can see there or not. So my next job was <laughs> to mount this box to the frame. The more I think about it, that's how it is on the R50. I think I'm gonna have to put a joint here because obviously, I mean, that, if that joint was perfect, the cab is still rubber mounted, but the, this is frame mounted. So I just mounted the body, by the way, the body's all mounted now. But um, I think I need to put the isolate. I really don't want to put the rubber there because the motor's there. So maybe a regular U joint, I don't know. I may put the rubber back in there temporarily and see how that feels uh, I could do that this slides up I could put the rubber back in there that still won't compensate for the fact that my weld isn't perfectly straight so I gotta fix that but I really don't like the way this looks what I really want I really want this box to be over more and down more Kind of where they're stuck. Oh, I really don't like the way this looks. It's just like it's out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it definitely clears. There's nothing here. Got a horn here. Air, air, whatever. Booster clears. A head will clear. Carb will clear. I'm pretty sure an AC will clear, but I still don't like it. So I think I may introduce a joint down there. 
or I may just roll the whole rock forward, which will bring this down and then bring it over. But if this brings it down, then I'll definitely need to have a joint here to aim back at the box. Either the rubber or a regular joint, and maybe even a joint down there. Just trying to keep it as simple as possible, but I don't think it's going to be that easy. Either way, the goal is to mount this thing to the frame somewhere, but I think I'm going to have to roll the rack. Which is not a big deal the way I tacked it on. Remember those little mounts can just be rotated a little bit on that Mazda bracket. The good news is, if you can see, all I worked to did to cut that ear off was not needed because you can see it's not hitting anything. I don't think. So I can actually cut put that ear back on. Go back to the stock Mazda mount. Back on this problem, I'm trying to mount these uh, D21 tailgate stays. I didn't know where they go, so I just drilled a hole. I don't know if I filmed this or not. And I put the tailgate level, truck level, drilled the hole, put it in. It seemed to work great, but when you try to close the tailgate, they bind up and they don't close. So I went back to the junkyard and I measured, I'm assuming, from the you measure from the pivot point, measure from the pivot point of the hinge up, and it was 29 centimeters or whatever, 29 something on my tape measure. So that makes sense. So I'm going to drill a hole there, put another rib nut there. I just mocked this up, and that'll, that'll basically lower this down like 30 millimeters. And that's like 31 millimeters. So uh, I think it'll fit. <laughs> if not, I'll have more holes in my tailgate that I gotta hold up. So I really don't know what I'm doing, but. I don't have any chains, and I really like this style better than the cable of the chain, so I'm going to drill more holes. That's the worst thing happen. I need my son to come and help me figure this out. It's like a trigonometry problem. Where the hell to mount these stupid things, because they got to fold just right. Let's drill another hole. In case you've never done this before, this is a 6mm rib nut. You just drill a hole in the outside of the dam of the rivet nut. So it goes in there just like a rivet. Here's the rivet nut tool. You put it on there and you squeeze it. And just... Then you got a... Uh... Wildlife today. Let's see if I can plug this. Oh, there we go. I got a six millimeter threaded hole. Probably in the wrong location. Which one is this? Now, the tailgate is level right now, but obviously, the million dollar question is to move the hole down. I wonder if it actually closed down. We need to move the hole down to get the tailgate level again. Fit. That's the problem. Is that See, these holes got to be precisely in the right place? So it needs to go down. I need to take this one out. Drill another hole. So what I'll do now is before I drill the hole, I'll mock it up and see if it's going to work. I think I figured it out. So I drilled the hole there, 29 inches above the pivot point, 29 centimeters, or whatever it was. I put on that bolt, and then I close the tailgate. <laughs> Look, uh, I gotta tell you, man, it's like the exact same length as this tailgate is meant to be. And then I marked where the new hole is gonna be. I'm not gonna use tape measures, so I'm assuming the hole goes there. You guys see? Let's see, it's really tight down here. It clears. It's the exact same size as a hard body. What's the chance of that? Like the shadows. Man, it's so hard to film it. But there we go. So, I think I need to drill a hole right there. My second hole in this poor tailgate. 
put another whatever it's called rev nut in there. See the chains are right there. And maybe it'll work. And then repeat for the other side. Because if you open the tailgate, oh. the truck is on level right now. It's stupid. But even if it's not level, that's. I can live with that. Whatever the hell that angle is. The truck is all crooked. I just put a level on it. You can see it's bubble shot way over there. Bubble shot way over there. Whatever that is. That's the same. Okay. Just put it on. Just drill another hole. Here's the million dollar question. Is the tailgate going to close? For another one. Oh my god, it worked. Oh my god. That's amazing. Sometimes I'm trying to get the light. It clears, it fits. It's like literally hitting. It like a chip of paint. I'm gonna have to grind the end off of that. Oh that is so cool. That is so cool. Now I just gotta deal with this. I'm assuming the bed is level. Shoot, I don't even know. Who cares? It works. Better than nothing. Now I actually have a tailgate workspace. Oh, now I gotta do this side. Alright, so here's how I did it. So, the middle of the pivot point is basically the top of this tailgate. If you look at the hinge, the center of the hinge is basically the top of this. So I followed that along and I marked the line on the uh, side of the corner of the bed. And then from that line, I measured up. You can actually just put the flip tape measure right on that line. I don't need another line. Oh, can you see? I measured up 29 centimeters. I just picked 29 centimeters because, you know, inches, metric, whatever number lines up, I usually pick. So 29 is right there. So basically, it's right in the crease. It's, uh, it's like a half an inch down. From that place. So then I drill a hole there, and then that'll help me find the other one. So let's see if it works twice. I don't know if I mentioned, but I did stick some new bolts in here. I need to get longer ones, that's right. We're like, I don't know. Baby. And then I measured uh, basically three quarters of an inch or 20 centimeters. Two centimeters? Yeah, two centimeters, 20 millimeters, I guess. Or three quarters of an inch, whatever you want. Draw that line around, draw a line there, drill a hole there. I think you know it's obvious why you can't put uh, anything else. You can't do a regular nut and bolt or stud or anything else because this is a completely enclosed box. There's no way to get to the back, no tail light you can remove. It's, it's just a a void, you know what I mean? Wow, look at my void, there's a gap down there. I need to cock that or something. But, um, yeah, you have to do a rib nut. I don't see any other way. This is what they look, look like. Uh, I buy them like a hundred pack or whatever on Amazon for eight millimeters and six millimeters and all the common size. I buy a lot of quarter inch because I do a lot of furniture with quarter inch. I got aluminum. You can get them in every size you can think of. I do three millimeter stuff for like RC cars and uh, everything in between. I don't think I've ever used the 12, but that's what it says they go up to. There you go. Now I got a, whatever you call it, bolt. I mean, these are flip flop. Now, I'll do the same thing I did over there. I guess I can measure this line, whatever that is. I'll test it just to make sure. Let's figure out what that dimension is. Because I just, uh, no idea what it is. So, it's a weird number. Maybe it's from the bottom. Okay, it's 21 from the bottom of that steel. It's exactly 21. This is kind of curved. There are all these weird angles in this truck. So 21 from the inside of the bottom. 21. <laughs> 
21. There's 21. So it's just a... So we just got to put somewhere in there and I think it was like 20... What did I do? Like half an inch or something down? Actually looks pretty damn good. Oh, that is good. Can you see that? Well, that works. I'll buy that. Finally, something's working for me today. There's broken bolts and sway bars stuck. Oh, I need to think. Something to work. There's a moment of truth. Oh. How many washers are on this bolt? Oh, what do you think? Oh, it's over there. Why aren't you helping, buddy? Get over here. That's not helping. Supposed to help me, not for me. Oh, it's on. I am done. Oh, Should we try it? There we go. It's the first test. Throw the junk off. I need to build a deck for this. I don't want this flat. Oh boy. Oh my boy. It worked. I might so surprised. I don't know. The little things. That is so cool. That is so cool. What a mess. The rusty truck has a tailgate latch now. Ah.